Okay, so for this problem, we want to find the maximum moment at B as a set of moving loads goes across this structure from right to left. So as we've talked in class, the first thing we want to do is find the influence line for the moment at B. I think if you guys uh, look at it for a second, you can see that if we go to B and put our little hinge, our model to help us with Mueller-Breslau, and then we put our maximum moment on there, point B, will, is it going to move down or up? So it'll move up, and then of course it will link and hinge back. So we have kind of like, it's not to scale, we have a very simple kind of almost tent looking influence line. So I'll go ahead and draw that. So the moment at B So it looks something like this. So we just need one value. So how do I find that one value? Well, I'll go back and look at the structure and I'll put my unit load right here. And why am I putting it here? Because remember, the x direction here is what? It's not the distance along the beam. It's the position of the unit load. The place that we're finding the moment is at B. So with the unit load there, I can look at my reactions, AY and CY. Do I need to uh, write an equation for that to find those reactions? What's the reactions of a simple supported beam with a load right in the middle? What, Mr. Little? Drawing You're drawing a blank? Okay, I'll write the equation then. The equation is equal to one half. <laughs> <laughs> and now if I cut that structure so that I can see the moment at B, and it doesn't really matter whether you cut it just to the right or just to the left, you're left with no real moment arm for one, so that's not a concern. And all I have is the reaction, which we know is one half. So what is the moment at B? Well, even if you did write the equation, which is the safest way to always do it, it shouldn't be too challenging. So when I sum my moments at the cut, I have my internal moment, which is a negative moment. Then I have plus the moment due to the one-half force with the moment arm of 100. So what's the moment? 50. So this will be 50. And this will have the units of feet. And just to remind you, this is 100 and 100. So not, not a very challenging influence line. So now what do we do? I move my set of loads starting from the right across the structure and I let each one of these loads in turn stop where? At the maximum value. Everybody see that? So let's start with what I'll call case one. So I'm going to kind of in a small version redraw my moment at B. So I'll So there it is. And moving from the right, I'm going to stop my first load four right here. And then ten feet back I have the fifteen kit force. And another twenty feet back I have the second 15 kip force. So I need to find the ordinates on my line that correspond <laughs> to those positions. Now the first one is easy, it's 50, right? What's the slope of my influence line? It's 50 to 100, which is really one to two. 
Or for every foot I go this way, I drop what? One half. So if I go 10 feet, that means I drop five. So this should be 45. I go another 20 feet, I should drop 10. So this should be 35. Everybody see that? So now the first case then, the moment at B, I'll call it 1, will then be 4 kips times 50 feet plus 15 kips times 45 feet plus 15 kips times 35 feet. So what's that equal to? Calculators, calculators, calculators. Anybody? 1,400? Can I get a verification? Yeah. 1,400. So that's 1,400 kip feet. All right, case two. So I'll redraw. my influence line and now my truck drives over and the second force in that sequence the 15 kip force stops at the maximum value that means 10 feet in front I have my 4 kip force and 20 feet behind, I have the last force, which is also 15 kips. So now I have, again, three values to locate. Now I already know this one is 50. So if I go 20 feet back, it drops 10, that's 40. I go 10 feet forward, that's a drop of 5, it goes to 45. So what is the moment at B for case 2? Somebody can go ahead and crank up their uh, calculator. So it's 4 times 45. 15, 30. Oh, you're already there. Too early. 15 kips times 50 plus 15 kips times 40. So what's that? 15, 30. Anybody else have that? Yes. Excellent. So we've got one more try. So this would be case three. Again, I'll just sketch the influence line for the moment at B. And now we'll look at our truck, again moving from right to left. Now the rear 15 kip force is there. And I didn't give myself enough room. 20 feet here would be the other 15. And then another 10 feet would be the 4 kip. Sorry, I kind of got it all scrunched in there. So I need, have, I need these three values. So again, this is 50. Move 20 feet forward, that should be 40, and this should be 35. So now the moment at B for case 3. Start at the front, I have 4 kips times 35 feet plus 15 kips times 40 feet plus 15 kips times 50 feet. That might be the biggest one, huh? Oh, not quite. 1490. So what's the maximum? Case 2 is the winner. Well, let's not read a pattern in that case 2 always is the winner. So any questions about that? This is a very good test problem. Did you guys hear that? This is a very good, repeat after me, test, test problem. problem. Oh, 
And with that, Mr. Fisher takes a picture. <laughs> All right. <laughs>